Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. My name is Cedric and welcome to day three in our uh, journey through the Lindemans gift crate of 2020. Today we are gonna look at Lindemans Framboise or Raspberry Beer. And again, I don't have much to say about this beer. If you want to know more about the history of the Lindemans Brewery, I will refer you back to the video about the Oudigers Cuverne. But today, this beer. This is, uh, just like all Lindemans beers, a Lambic beer. And this one is developed in 1980, or at least marketed in 1980. They already had the Creek and they started experimenting with other fruits. Uh, and as you will notice later on, they started experimenting with herbs as well, but that's a whole other story. So they were exper experimenting with other fruits and they tried raspberries. So they took a young Lambic and added, depending on what, uh, who you talk to, 30% of filtered raspberry juice. Now, I can tell you already that the label actually says 40%. Um, this results again in uh, the lowest ABV in the range, 2.5% ABV, and a, uh, let's say, a beer of a lovely color. Now, I haven't had this for, I believe, 20 years, so I am very curious as to how I will experience this now i do know that gastronomically speaking this beer is being used quite often uh, it's used as an aperitif because it's uh, it activates the stomach juices so it makes people hungry makes people consume uh, a bit more i can imagine uh, using this in cocktails and I am unsure, I don't think that I ever have used it in cocktails, because back in my uh, bar and chef days, uh, I wasn't just a chef, I also was a cocktail shaker for a short, short while. Uh, yeah, comes with bartending, I guess. But I can imagine using this uh, in a combination with vodka or limoncello or uh, some old citroen Geneva, lemon gin. Anywho, When it comes to food, I'd say I'd love to use this again in salads and uh, yeah, cold plates. Uh, and I would like to replace the wine vinegar in the sauce with this beer. I think it will have a uh, it will have an edge. It would be quite a different experience. And when it comes to desserts. Well, it's raspberry, so what can I say? Anything with chocolate, chocolate mousse, dark chocolates, uh, but also slightly sour and sweet desserts like ice cream or cheesecake, for example. I can imagine this going very well with those. About the beer itself, like I said, I can't tell you a lot. Uh, all that I can tell you is it has an, uh, a fuck ton of prizes. Uh, or awards, actually. For example, uh, the International Beer Awards in Hong Kong in 2010, it won Best Fruit Beer of the World, and at the World Beer Awards it won World's Best Framboise uh, 2018, because apparently Framboise is a separate category. It won the Gold Medal and the Country, uh, country Award for Sour and Wild Framboise 2019, it won the Gold Medal Sour and Wild Framboise 2020 and the world's, world's Best, the country winner, Sour and Wild Framboise 2021. So yeah, it has been taking home a lot of medals and awards these past uh, five years. One thing you might have noticed is that I skipped a day for my Lindemann's general classic uh, tasting glass and I dug into my collection and took this one out. Now you might see it, you might not, 
But over here it says framboise in large and in tiny letters Lindemans. This is also a one colored logo and this is, an, uh, uh, this is a glass from the early 80s. You can see this because it's actually a sort of enamel and it's um, practically baked into the glass as they did back in those days. I'm actually pretty proud of this one. I absolutely love it. You will see a lot of uh, different Lindemans flutes, the, the, the Pecheres, the Cassis, the Framboise, but they will be uh, multicolored logos with gold edges. You might even find the, the US ones with the Merchant du Vin name in it. But this is the old original, uh, yeah, Belgian enamel glass. Nothing special on the label, nope. Here we go, 40% raspberry juice. Now you will see in just a second why they originally served this in a narrow fluid class. There we go. Look at that color. It's a deep dark pink color and maybe you'll see it better here. Because it's a very narrow glass and a quite a dark beer, less light passes through in the, the white tasting glasses. So here there's less volume and more light passing through. So it actually has a beautiful effect on the color and we will see that again later this week. Of course, long narrow glasses normally have the, uh, the downside that they are not good in keeping aromas, but with a beer like this, there's so much aroma present. Only smelling it uh, makes my, my mouth water and, and it feels like I've just dug into a whole box of raspberries. And yeah, raspberry is an absolute dominant scent, a very powerful aroma. All I can get out of this in the nose is raspberry, raspberry, raspberry. A bit of sweetness, but yeah, a bit of sour, but raspberries are sour in itself. No alcohol in the nose, of course, with a two and a half percent ABV. Where would you get it from? Yeah, lovely smell. can't say much about this. It smells exactly, or it tastes ex exactly as it smells. And yeah, no surprises. It's exactly as it's advertised. It delivers what it's promised. Uh, it's a bunch of raspberries. My first idea is it mm, could have been a bit sweeter but I would probably not have liked it if it was sweeter. So I actually think it's, it's a very well balanced. And it's a beautiful beer. And I seem to remember it being less heavy, less powerful. So maybe the 30% isn't a typo on their website, but it's just the old recipe and maybe they uh, raised it to 40%. Just a thought. 
I have no idea about that. Oh yeah. This tastes like a walk in the forest. <clears throat> Another thing they had back in the days, back in the 80s, was smaller bottles. I do believe that back then they were only 20 centiliters, not 25. And that's why I have to fill up my glass a second time. Yeah. Well, that really goes down. As I said, I now that I tasted it again, I can actually really imagine this going into salads, uh, replacing wine vinegar, maybe even replacing wine here and there. I also can imagine making a very nice stew with this beer. <coughs> it's not the Belgian classic because we would use a very dark brown beer like Sim Bernardus or uh, West Vleteren or Nonkel Pater. But I can't imagine if I use this beer in a stew and uh, a piece of dark chocolate. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try that out someday. This is a beautiful combination of the, the fruit maceration, the lambic with that sour edge, the tannins from the wood coming into the beer, from riping on the barrels. Yeah. I didn't expect this, but I actually really love it. And I'm normally not a fan of raspberries in general, so... Well done, Lindemans. Cheers, you guys, <coughs> as usual. If you like this beer, if you have any questions or remarks, put them down here in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, click like. If you disliked it, yeah, go ahead, dislike. And if you want to know more, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll get notified. And you'll see me again, uh, as usual, every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday at 5 p.m. Ciao.